I have two goals in this video. The first one is to get rid of all of these warnings on the right side here. And the other one is to have something showing in our browser. Even if it's ugly, just to have the browser showing without too many arrows in the console, then I'd be happy with that. So the first thing we're gonna do is take a look at the upgrade guide. In fact, what I might do is get out a full screen here. Yeah, that's probably gonna give us a better experience. So the next thing I want us to do is go to app.view and change the way we're using the template there, app.view. And it looks like the new way has simply removed the wrapper, the div wrapper. There we go, so let's save it. Okay, still working, and let's move on. Now next, it's telling us that there's going to be a whole bunch of View 3 related breaking changes. Now, if you don't know the difference between the Composition API and the Options API, and if you don't understand how the Options API works, it might be worth learning the Composition API before upgrading. And I say this because Quasar Docs will start using the Composition API, so it really is something worth learning. And since most View 2 code is actually compatible with View 3, we're going to just focus on getting everything working before even thinking about moving code to the Composition API. Okay, so what I'm basically saying is if you're using the Options API, you can still upgrade to View 3 and the Options API will still work, which is really cool. And I'll also mention at this point that Vuex and Vue Router have their own breaking changes, but once again, the API itself is almost identical, so this may not even be a problem for you. Like Vue has done an amazing job of making the upgrade to Vue 3 as seamless as possible. So having said all of that, we'll cover some of the main breaking changes that you're definitely going to face. And the first one is this one here. So rather than having value and at input for vModels, we're using model value and at model uh, add update model value. Let me just show you what I mean. This is one of those things where you really just need an example. So let me just search through here and see if I can find V dash model. There we go. There's an example of it. And you might know this already, but behind the scenes, when you're using V dash model, the view compiler is actually doing this. It's changing V dash model to at input is equal to value and then dialog visible in this scenario is equal to value. And then it's also passing through the value of dialog visible. So behind the scenes, V model is actually doing this, okay? V model is just a really nice, it's really nice sugar syntax to make all of that work because it's such a common pattern. However, what it does in the new version of view is this. Instead of at input, it now says at update model value so it's a little bit more specific and that allows us a bit more flexibility and instead of value it's now model value okay and that's important to know because in the situations where you're doing this manually and you're not using v dash model that's going to be a breaking change and in fact we're actually going to look through this project now and see if we can find some of those breaking changes let me just bring this back once again, behind the scenes, vModel is automatically going to use this new syntax for you, which is really cool. This is only situations where you're using value or you're using at input. They need to be updated. So let's see if we can find that within my code base. Let's search for the words value. And there we go. That doesn't show up at all, which is good news. And how about at input? Ah, okay, so I have a couple of situations where I use at input, and in these situations, we want to use at update model value instead. So let's paste that in there, and here's another example. Let's paste that in there. So that's all I had to do to perform that upgrade. Simple. Okay, what's next? Well, next, I want to try and get rid of all of these warnings. So let's go through them one at a time. In fact, I think that might show up next in the docs. Oh, actually, let me not skip this part. So if you want to use Vue.js DevTools with Vue 3, you need to install the new beta version of Vue.js DevTools. So it's worth getting that installed if you want to use that. Um, so you can do that now, or you can do that later, but just know that your current version of Vue DevTools will not work. You need to use the new one. Vue Router 4 has got a few of its own breaking changes. Most of them you won't hit. So let's go ahead and fix the main one, though, which is the way that it's imported. So if we jump into source router index.js let's jump in there first check that you're not doing anything different from the original so if you've jumped into this file before and done something funky 
then you're going to have to do a bit more of a manual update. I haven't, I'm doing everything exactly as it was when I first installed the application, which means I can just copy this and paste it straight in. And that should fix part of the error. Uh, and we're getting this void thing here. Yeah, so I think I have to set that to undefined instead. And by the way, the way I know that is because I got this ES linting error. Yeah, expected undefined instead saw void. And that's referring to this section here. So let's just come in here and change that to undefined. And maybe just flag that because I'm not sure if I should be facing that error. So to do check this is okay. All right, because it kind of concerns me that in the docs they're using void, but I have to change that to undefined. So I'm just going to flag that by adding a to-do. Anyway, scrolling down, let's check that's working. Yes. Next, we want to jump into our routes.js file, and we'll need to make a few changes here. So how will I tackle this? Well, let's have a look uh, and see if there's any differences. Path slash um, component it's using is main layout, which shouldn't matter anyway. So that all looks the same to me. The way we're using routes looks the exact same to me. Um, scrolling down. Ah, but this part is a little bit different. Okay, so it's using error 404. So it looks like we might have to import that component instead. Here we go. So I'm going to copy that, come up here and say import and let's import error 404. Sorry, I did that kind of weird. And now I should be able to just copy paste this in directly. And there we go. I think that'll work now. And that problem is related to Vuex. That's a composition API related problem. And that's Vuex as well. Cool. So all of our routes related errors have been removed. So hopefully that's okay now. Let's move on to Vuex. So we'll copy paste this, copy that, control P, paste that in there. So we jump into that file. And this is something that I'm going to have to do a little bit more manually. So let's open up just a new document here so I can paste this in. And let's have a look at the differences. So here I'm importing to don'ts. So let's get rid of that example and change that to to don'ts. What else? Here I'm using the to don'ts module. So let's paste that in there. And that's about it. So now I should be able to just copy that and paste it directly in here so that we're using Vuex the way we should be using it. Okay, save that. All right, that's gotten rid of another error. Now we've got a problem in our mutations file. Now what's this problem here? So export default. All right, it looks like it's related to when we're importing view here. Ah, I see the problem. So we don't have to use view.set anymore in the new version of view 3, which is really cool. So you might have done this before where you run into these updating caveats when you're using arrays and objects. That is no longer an issue a lot of the time with view 3. So here where I'm using view.set, we don't even have view.set available to us anymore. So I can get rid of that import and change the way uh, I'm, I'm updating my to don't here. So let's see what's going on. First, we get the index of the to don't. Um, then we get the to don't that we want to update. So we're finding it using that index. And then basically, we're replacing state dot to don'ts. And then we're getting the index of that. So now I can do this in a more sort of um, JavaScript-y like way. So a more sort of bare bones JavaScript kind of way. And I should be able to update it this way. So what I'm going to do now is just assume that's going to work, but add myself a little message here saying to do, oh, I don't need a comment, to do check this works. Okay, this is kind of like the only way I've thought of to, to do these updates safely, just to add these kind of to do's throughout my application that I can go back and check that I have actually implemented the update properly until we have a working version of the app. So it's very, so it's easier to get some feedback with these problems. All right, so moving on. Oh, actually we should check if that actually fixed it. And it did. Next we have a composition API problem. And that's because I was using the composition API with view two. So basically view made it possible for you to use the composition API in view two via a plugin. So if I come to, I think it's called, yeah, here we go, composition-api. 
I'm actually installing the Composition API using a boot file. We no longer need to do that because the Composition API is available to us for free with Vue 3. So let's go ahead and delete that. And then I'll have to delete the reference to it in quasar.conf and there it is there. So there we go, save that. And that hasn't fixed the problem. So let's just look for, I might just search for the word um, composition here. There we go. Ah, so the problem is, um, I was using the view composition API plugin to get my reference, okay? If you know how to use a comp composition API, this will make sense to you. Uh, however, we don't need to use the plugin anymore. We can just pull it directly out of view because it's available in view three. So let's save that. And that error is gone. And now we've gotten rid of all of our errors. Let's see if it actually works. I'm doubtful that it will because something's bound to have gone wrong. And it has, cannot read properly prototype of, okay, so in my app defaults file, Right, so we need to change the way that we set global properties. You can't just use view.prototype anymore. This is a problem I might actually fix later on. So once again, I'm going to add a to-do here, fix this, and then let's jump into our quasar.conf and go to app defaults and just comment that out for now. Cool, we got a new error. So now, cannot read property create. Okay, so in view three, we no longer have a created hook. It's actually been replaced with the setup method that we use for the composition API. So I'm gonna find all situations where I've said created. I think that's what the error is here. Here we go. Oh no, that's, here's an example here. So instead of created, I should be able to set that to setup. Once again, I'm gonna add a comment here saying, check this works. I wanna do this with all these changes that I can't really test straight away. Now let's refresh the page. All right, we're still getting that issue. Ah, and it looks like it's related to a directive. Maybe I can get a bit more information here. Ah, here we go, we've got some more info here. So we've got a problem with our go back directive in the main layout. So let's go to main layout and look for go dash back. So it looks like there's a problem with this directive. Maybe it's not available anymore. I'm not actually sure. So once again, uh, I might just comment that out and also make that a to-do. To-do, fix this. <laughs> They're not very descriptive to-dos, um, but I don't think that really matters for this video. Ah, cool. And we've got something that's working. Let's refresh it again. We've still got a couple of little issues here, but we have something that is visible. Um, <laughs> as you can see, it's kind of like a, a dodgy looking version of the app. A lot of stuff is probably gonna be broken. Yeah, that's broken. But at least we've got something that we can play around with and it's going to be much easier to upgrade from this point forward. So I'm gonna leave it there. And in the next video, we'll push forward and fix some more of these issues. And you might learn some cool stuff along the way. And this should hit all of the issues related to upgrading, at least most of the issues related to upgrading an app from Quasar V1 to Quasar V2. I'll see you in the next video. This is exciting. This is an app using Vue 3 and the new version of Quasar. So I'm super excited and I can't wait to push ahead with you in the next video.